as we lay the ghosts of prosperity to rest, and unravel the camouflage netting to lay our table at the last supper of our age, a seance with the 21st century zeitgeist, the European project is consigned to clamour amongst the septic remains of the French Revolution. The skulls beneath poppy fields chatter away and are overheard by the secret police, while Stalin's acrid breath stokes the coals of tyranny. A twisting whirlwind of censorship descends, cutting right and left and down into the quick of culture and decency. Meanwhile, a circle of eight gather around the kitchen table, unspoken taboos whisper in the silence between approved speech. Softly, the radio mutters platitudes, and your phone drinks your essence. And stumbling in the ruins of your virgin oil fields is a stuttering ruined maid who laughs mirthlessly at the children plodding conscientiously through school. The kids look back at her, a ghoul with reflective eyes. Those eyes show history, one that progresses unstoppably towards justice and peace. But it's just a mirage, and when they blink, she disappears. A chill breeze blows across the yard. It's the chill of deathly purpose that has been absent for so many decades. Dreams when the poker step starts. Twenty seven times that you've tried your luck. Never a better time when the poker step starts. Two goes into nine if the poker step stops. Everyone's alive while the poker step lasts. Never leap the line while the poker step lasts. Just a vapid rhyme if the poker step stops. Just keep the time for the poker step to last. Terror in the line if the poker step stops. Just a rusted dime if the poker step stops. Everything declines before the poker step stops. Never a reply once the poker step stops. Just keep the time to keep a poker step slot. Never leave the line if you want to live. Houses built in line for the poker steps lot. Keep in beaten time while the poker step lasts. Profit is from time while the poker step lasts. Hold your money tight if the poker step stops. Nothing will be right when the poker step stops. Just a rattled sigh when the poker step stops. I was almost conscripted into the war between our worlds that killed about a quarter of all human life. I say, almost, because I found a way out of that mess. The climax, the most dangerous moment, came at the Palace of Tranquility. It was a bland, grey, concrete monstrosity, built to prevent the prospect of exciting those who entered through its vast, lightened entrance. Indeed, the entrance allowed sunlight to pour in through huge windows. Deeper within, however, and the windows were above eye level. The knowledge of an outside existed but it could not be seen. The walls were a calm, pale blue, although they exuded no calmness. Anything one might feel was an illusion. I was ordered to attend an appointment with the military clinical psychologist on the third floor. I was admitted almost exactly on time, the full waiting room showing this to be a well-maintained factory line. He looked at me with professional clinical eyes. Name? I gave him my name. What do the voices tell you? He had jumped straight in. The voices tell me the war is just, and that I must fight in the war. He showed his first real glimpse of humanity. Who tells you those things? My audiovisual cast. It tells me these things on the loop. It tells everybody those things. You are not insane. It tells me lies. It tells me that very few of our soldiers die. That we have killed more than five million of the enemy, but lost only 50,000 of our own. It tells everybody lies. You are perfectly sane. In fact, you are more sane than the majority of the people who come through those doors, because you are willing to admit these are lies. 
But I can't cope with the lies. I can't believe them. That doesn't make you insane. If I am not insane, and they lie to us, then how can you continue to believe them? You just told me that they were lies. I don't believe them. So, give me an exemption. No, because even though I don't believe the lies, I still follow the lies. Why? Because I don't want to go to the place you're going. Although I spent ten years in a desert prison camp, I avoided the aerial bombardments that the city suffered. After the war, I passed that building again. It had taken a direct hit. Floor three was the point at which the missile had struck. 